he wasn't on any kind of gravy train. He's the last person you would have expected to come to China and support what the CPC was doing. The only question he asked me is, can I continue my work? He was in the Great Hall of the People, listening to General Secretary Xi Jinping's speech. He was also met by Premier Li Keqiang. He was a, a model example of a Western journalist in China. He had so many books about China, even enough to run a small library. You know, he'd had a serious career in journalism in the UK. Andrew was very well off financially, and in fact, he really didn't need this job at China Daily to survive. He could have been lying on the beach somewhere, soaking up the sun. We hear he has 14 properties back home in the UK. Among ourselves, we call him Fang Shu, uncle of houses. So Andrew didn't come here for the money. In fact, I think what drove him was curiosity. Sometimes Andrew and I would be sitting outside watching life go by and he'd say, do you know what? I think people overseas just don't understand that people here are very happy, they're not all miserable and in chains. One afternoon we were relaxing in Andrew's garden and the issue of Xinjiang came up and he argued very forcefully that allegations of genocide were total fiction. Andrew frequently argued with people about China on Facebook and Twitter, including his closest friends. Andrew returned to England a lot on holiday and would have met a lot of his old friends there, and I have a feeling that a lot of them were shocked by what had happened to him, and indeed they may have thought that he'd somehow lost his mind and been brainwashed in China. Actually, he felt it was his responsibility to tell the world about the real China. He was being very genuine. In a diary entry this year, Andrew said China is a more civilized society compared with some Western countries. He wrote that you are unlikely to get physically attacked. There is not a widespread drugs problem and no real underclass. He also asked me another question. When I cannot lift my arm, how can I do? I told him we have some mechanical toys to uh, help you. Andrew wrote around one million words about China during his 13 years here. After being diagnosed with the disease, he was gradually unable to stretch his fingers straight. Even so, he wrote more than 100 articles. Andrew reckoned one of his biggest fans was Zhou Shuchun, the publisher of China Daily. He said Andrew knew a lot more about China than many Chinese journalists, especially in relation to all of the trends that were happening in the country economically and politically. I think he wanted to stay in Beijing till the end. For him, home is here. For the past 13 years, China has never let Andrew down. China has never let down anyone who loves her. I think Andrew Moody, actually, we could refer him as the Edgar Snow of the New Era. I mean, seeing is believing, you know, unless you come to China, unless you really go into the uh, real society of China, you probably wouldn't reflect a true China. <laughs>